Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we visit the clan jetties of Georgetown, Penang. This is a continuation of my well key narrated walking tour. If you have not viewed that video, I will put the link in the description box. Now before I go any further, let me give you our starting point coordinates. You can key these coordinates into your GPS, Google Maps or Waze and use this video as your virtual tour guide to explore the clan jetties. It's like having me by your side and we'll explore the place together. I am looking now at Julius Street Court, one of the roads created following the land reclamation of the late 19th century. When Georgetown was established in 1786, this whole area was seen. A massive reclamation project created what we know today as Well Key. In other words, the historic clan jetties only came into being in the late 19th and early 20th century. But what are clan jetties and why are they called by that name? Well, clan jetties are in fact villages that were built above the sea. They are connected to dry land by a series of piers or jetties. Living on stilts above the sea is not unique to Penang. You can find similar villages in Pangkor, Pulaketam and Sandakan. What makes Penang's clan jetty special is that the original villagers came from the same clan thousands of miles away in Fujian province in southern China. This all happened during a time when Penang experienced an economic boom brought on by prosperity from tin mining. We have arrived at Lim Jetty or San Lim Kyo. The original inhabitants of this jetty are people from the Lim clan who arrived in Penang from Fujian province. This waterborne village of the Lim clan is the first or northernmost of six existing clan jetties. This stretch of coastline on Penang Island is muddy. It was wrestled from nature which would have otherwise populated it with mangroves. But why would the Lims, and for that matter, the other Hokkien clans, willingly uproot themselves from their homeland to migrate thousands of miles only to continue life in this rather inadequate existence? Well, it all boiled down to a matter of survival. Better this than the harsh realities of life in Fujian province in the 19th century, where famine and war had decimated the population and displaced many more. The sufferings and starvation in their homeland played out at a time when Penang was experiencing prosperity. So it did not take much to induce a new wave of Hokkien migrants to pack up for a new life beyond the horizon. And when these migrants arrived in Penang, there was no welcome party and life was no bed of roses. They were the newcomers or Sinkat. They came in the wake of earlier migrants, including their fellow clansmen who had arrived in Penang generations before them. But while the pioneers or Lao Cat had prospered over the generations, the newcomers were penniless and came with little more than the clothes on their backs. When they arrived, most of the land in Georgetown was already occupied. Until the reclamation that created Welke, those at the bottom rung of society were stuffed 13 to the dozen into To Akalain, Boat Alley, Achin Street and Armenian Street. So it was a breath of fresh air, so to speak, for the Kuli class to be given the option of building waterborne villages along the coastline. The various clans laid claim to different sections of Welke each constructing wooden piers that jug into the sea and populating them with houses on both sides. The people brought with them their folk religion and ways of worship, so each clan would have its own patron deity, which is venerated in a temple or shrine somewhere near the entrance to the jetty. Once of modest proportions, some of these shrines have grown in size over the generations. There were numerous jetties built along the eastern coast of Georgetown, of which six are still standing today. The ones still standing are the jetties of the Lims, the Chews, the Tans, the Lees, 
the mixed clan and the Yos. They represent perhaps half of all the jetties that once lined Georgetown. Many of these fell into disuse, their original occupants having moved out or moved on. In the case where whatever is out of sight is also out of mind, most of the people in Penang would not remember the Northern Street Court Jetty, or the Ping An Jetty, or the Bang Liao Jetty, to name some. Until more recent times, the occupants of the clan jetties had no emotional or sentimental attachment to the jetties either. It was for many their halfway house from complete destitution in Fujian province to a better life on Penang Island, preferably on dry land. If they could, they would live elsewhere. Many who have never lived at the clan jetties often harbour an idealised vision of urban village life over there. But the truth is far removed from that. Over the last few years, a number of high-rise buildings have sprouted along Yauke. But with high control, this being the core zone of UNESCO's World Heritage Site, gone are the days when developers may build as tall as they wish. Present-day tourists trudging through Welki often mistaken it for a very old part of town. While it's true that Welki has been around for over a hundred years, compared to the history of British settlement on Penang Island, it is not nearly as old. When Captain Francis Light arrived in 1786, this stretch was seen buffeted by a dense cover of mangrove swamp. In the case of Man vs Wang, the swamp was successively cleared, forming a stretch of beach, the coastline of which is marked by Beach Street today. Another 100 years would pass before the shoreline was pushed out through a massive land reclamation project. It created badly needed space for go-downs to support the harbour activities which were booming from tin and trade. That same boom would translate into a dire need for human labour and that led to an influx of Hokkien migrants. The migrants came to fill the most menial of occupations, to be the harbour coolies and stevedores. This was true for the migrants from the Lim, Chiu and Li clans. Some offered their services as boatmen to transport cargo between the steamships and the shore. Jobs at the harbour eluded migrants from the Tan, Yo and Kui clans. They had to eke out a living, making firewood and charcoal. In other words, the very mangrove that was held at bay to create the clan jetties was also the source of raw material for the firewood trade. On this side of Welki is Armenian Street Cart, and across from it is Chiu Jetty, the largest of the clan jetties. The signage overhead is read in Hokkien as Se Chiu Gyo. As with the other clan jetties, at Chiu Jetty, you will have to pass through temples dedicated to the jetty's patron deities before you reach the jetty proper and often there will be a few more shrines and temples at the end of the jetty facing the sea. It goes to show that living amphibiously above the sea and exposed to all manners of weather, the dwellers of the jetty often need to call for divine protection. Over here is a mural by local artist Simon Tang. It is called Ama and Asun meaning grandmother and grandson. The mural was painted in April 2013 at the height of Penang street art craze. And on this side, we have the main temple of Jiu Jetty undergoing restoration and expansion. When you are visiting the clan jetties, be mindful that you are visiting someone's neighborhood. To maintain their privacy, the dwellers have set visiting hours for tourists. Recognition by UNESCO of the clan jetties as a World Heritage Site is both a boon and a bane. 
It certainly has brought a lot of global attention that has saved the jetties from being demolished, but it came with a price. Like water on the wooden boardwalk, their privacy has evaporated. Suddenly, the dwellers of the jetties have to face a deluge of tourists prying into their lives, peering into their doorways, peeking into their windows, and snapping shots to post on Facebook and Instagram. It was not what they signed up for when informed their neighborhood will be a World Heritage Site. For that reason, I exercise much restraint when shooting this video. I want to respect the privacy of the jetty dwellers the same way one would respect the villagers when you enter their village. Visitors to the clan jetties must always be mindful that they are visiting someone's village and remember that this is not a cultural theme park. On the other hand, jetty dwellers who benefited from the World Heritage Inscription welcome the visitors. Those are the ones who have cashed in on the resulting attention, setting up shops or turning their homes into homestays. They would want more visitors to the jetty. Here we arrive at the home of my friend Chiu Siu Ping, who is also benefiting from the World Heritage Inscription. She has turned over her home for use in a theatrical show called Folklore by the Sea, which chronicles the arrival of the original jetty dwellers. Murals are painted on the side of Siu Ping's home. This present mural is to advertise folklore by the sea. It replaces an earlier mural painted in 2012 by Lithuanian artist Ernest Zacharevic called Children in a Boat. Exposed to the elements, that previous mural quickly deteriorated, so it's just as well that a new one takes over its spot. You can still see the previous mural on my website, I will put the link on the top right. And here you would see how the eastern shoreline of Georgetown would look like without its mangrove trees. Mangroves used to encase much of the eastern coastline of Penang Island. Human arrival banished the coastal forests, but it's still a tug of war between people and nature. Nature, by nature, does not give up easily. It will quickly plant itself on any unattended shoreline. And here, we see a dragon boat. This is one of those used for the dragon boat races. As I was saying, the clan jetties were built on what was formerly mangrove swamp, and this should dispel any romantic notion of living here. The original inhabitants did not actually choose to live here. They had to. They had no other choice. If they got to choose, they would choose to live on dry land. They live here because they could not afford homes on dry land. And while they managed to vanquish the mangroves, the mangroves have their revenge. That revenge comes in the form of a stench. The methane from the mangroves, mixed with human excrement, often produces a most unpleasant smell. This is something which dry land dwellers, who often fantasize about the idyllic life on the clan jetties, do not take into account. We have reached the very end of Jiu Jetty and we are standing now over the sea. We can look across this pier towards the ferry terminal Pankalan Raja Tun Uda. Here are some fish cages. If the fisherman is around, he will be able to tell us what it is for. You can also hire a boat here to take you to various places in Penang. Although the World Heritage Recognition has saved the clan jettings, it should be noted that what we are seeing today is not what it was in the beginning. The original inhabitants who were coolies at the harbour have long passed on. 
the present jetty dwellers are the second, third or fourth generation. They are no different from you and me, modern people with new aspiration. Those with the means have moved out, and when they do, they often rent out their homes for commercial purposes. So many homes have turned into shops selling knickknacks and trinkets. This is not what was expected of the clan jetties when it was given World Heritage Inscription, but it's not unique to Penang. The same phenomenon can be observed at World Heritage sites all over the world, where the very recognition meant to preserve is the catalyst of change. The one truism here as is elsewhere is that if people are given the opportunity to make money, then make money they will. Perhaps those who envision urban villages frozen in time through World Heritage Inscription are simply too idealistic. However, the opportunity to profit from tourism has also created new conflicts between those who want to commercialize their homes and those who want to maintain their privacy. This has flared up into envy, animosity, and at times, open hostility towards tourists. For that reason, those visiting the clan jetties are always reminded to be respectful and not be intrusive into people's homes. As long as you visit during the visiting hours, which is from 9am to 9pm, and you stay on the piers itself, you are good. If you want to shoot inside people's house, get their permission first. While those who lament that the clan jetties are no longer what they used to be, should understand that the world has moved on. The present clan jetty dwellers no longer work at the harbour. The coolie jobs that brought their forefathers over are not here anymore. And even if they are, the present generation is disinclined to such hard labour. The shop selling knickknacks is a manifestation of how the clan jetty dwellers have moved on and reinvented themselves. Here's another dragon boat, but I believe this one is not for dragon boat racers. Rather, it is used to carry effigy of clan jetty deities during their feast days. Here's another shrine. Its name reads in Hokkien as Hai Guakyong, which translates as palace outside the sea. And over here is yet another Chinese temple. It is perpendicular to one more temple which faces Welki. This one is called Cheng Diam Kiong. It has a granite facade embellished with bar relief. On this side is a statue of the Monkey King or Sun Wukong. Now we continue down Welke. On our left is the Sri Tanjong Volunteer Fire Brigade. And this coffee shop takes its name after the fire brigade, calling itself Bomba Kopitiam.
we turn left here to go to the next clan jetty. This is a Tan Jetty or Se Tan Gyo. The Tan clan of this jetty came from Tong An district, which was previously part of Chuanzhou prefecture, but is now part of Xiamen. Although the Tans of Chuanzhou and Xiamen are Hokkien people also, the Hokkien spoken there is slightly different from the Hokkien spoken in Penang because the pioneers for Penang came from a different city which is Changzhou. To the locals accustomed to speaking Penang Hokkien, when we hear someone speaking in the Chuanzhou or Xiamen accent, it sounds very China-like. This is especially true of the very elderly living in the clan jetties as they were the latter day migrants from China. Their speech is still very much reflective of where they came from, not having fully naturalized to the local accent. But because their Hokkien sounds very Chinese, they are often mistaken to be old time migrants, but in fact, the opposite is true. Those who speak Hokkien incorporating many loan words from Malay and English are the offspring of the early migrants, while those who speak a purer form of Hokkien are the latecomers. Before the World Heritage Inscription, there has been numerous debates over whether the clan jetties should be preserved. On one side is the argument that the jetties are a slum, an eyesore and a fire hazard. There are hygiene issues, sanitary issues and concerns for waterborne diseases. And contrary to expectation, it is not cheap to maintain a home at the clan jetties. When the jetties were first built a hundred years ago, the eastern coastline of Penang Island was still clad in mangrove swamps. The mangroves provided cheap water-resistant lumber for constructing the piers and the houses. They also sustained the livelihood of some who went into the charcoal making business. As recently as the 1970s, Charcoal making was an industry in places such as Jelotong. But now, most of the mangroves have been cleared and with that, the source of cheap lumber is gone. There is a high maintenance cost attached to living above salt water. Everything tends to erode and corrode more easily and these have to be replaced every few years. On the other side is the argument that the clan jetties form an important part of Penang's history and we should not allow urbanization to destroy the social fabric of these neighborhoods. And then on 7 July 2008, Georgetown joined Malacca in having its inner city recognized as a World Heritage Site. The core zone to be preserved comprises an area of 109.38 hectares and includes the whole clan jettings. In other words, it's pointless now to argue whether the clan jetty should be preserved. As part of the World Heritage Site, it will be preserved. But what is preserved is not like Angkor Wat or the Taj Mahal. It's not even like Fort Convales. All of these are tangible heritage that only needs restoration. The clan jetties are living villagers, but the villagers have evolved. They are no longer populated by the coolies who work the harbour. Put a clan jetty dweller side by side to a dry land Penang Islander, you can't tell them apart. They share the same aspiration for a better life. And that better life is usually a comfortable home on dry land. It may be many stories in the sky, but it's still on dry land. Those who remain at the clan jetties are often the less upwardly mobile. The World Heritage Inscription has not preserved what it intended to preserve 
but has instead enabled the clan jetties to become a lucrative commercial vehicle. Many whose homes are right on the tourist path have turned those homes into shops, and should we fault them? If a person has a chance to earn a living, why not? Do we dictate what business they go into, what language they speak, and what clothes they wear? The clan jetties are not a human zoo. We cannot keep people frozen in time to support our heritage desires even when we ourselves aspire to modernize and urbanize. And those who moan that the clan jetties have become commercialized should know right from the start what will happen with World Heritage Inscription. It has happened at other World Heritage sites and is happening here at the clan jetties. I am glad, however, that the jetty dwellers are beginning to see how World Heritage Inscription is tearing at their social fabric and they are taking steps to manage the commercialization of their villages. Here at Lee Jetty, they have decided to forbid outsiders from entering, banishing commercialization altogether so that they can have their peace. So at Lee Jetty, you don't see any shops selling trinkets and this is as far as I will go. As we can see, each village has taken its own approach in dealing with the effects of World Heritage Inscription. What Lee Jetty has done is quite admirable and although there are no gates to prevent people from entering their jetty, we should always be respectful and not trespass. Has Lee Jetty done the right thing, while jetties that have opened themselves to commercialization have not? I can't say so. There is no right or wrong to this question. Each jetty has to examine its own circumstance and approach World Heritage Inscription in a way that is best for its dwellers. The coolies of the Lee clan have been in Penang longer than Lee Jetty itself. As they work as boatmen, that alley is today called Boatman Alley. Those were the working class Lees. When Lee Jetty was built, some of them relocated to live on the jetty. Now we continue to the 5th clan jetty and it's called the new jetty or mixed clan jetty. Built as recently as 1960, it is the newest and possibly the last jetty erected off Welke. The new jetty was built to house migrants of miscellaneous clans who didn't belong to any of the other clans but needed a place to stay of their own. The original inhabitants were port laborers. Today, the houses here are occupied by their descendants. Some houses have also been taken over by newcomers after the original owners moved out. Let's take a walk to the end of the jetty. There are no souvenir shops here either, and all the houses on this jetty are still residential. We can see in the distance a waterborne temple. That is the Hian Bu Tian. We will visit it in a separate video. We are off the tourist trail now. Although the new jetty has not erected any signages to keep out visitors, most tourists don't venture here anyway.
And now we proceed to the last and final clan jetty in today's narrated walking tour. I hope you have enjoyed this tour so far. I want to give you a glimpse of Penang, not from what tourists often see, but on the streets themselves, at the actual lives of the people, and what this World Heritage Site is about. If you enjoyed this walking tour, please take a moment to give this video a like and share it and also subscribe to my channel for more of my videos. We are approaching the end of Well Key, and soon the road will widen to form the Toon of the Lim Chong Yu Expressway. As with here, all the dry land that I have walked through on this video is reclaimed land that was once seen. And as before, we will pass a Chinese temple before we arrive at the clan jetty itself. So here we are at the final jetty of this walk. This is Yo Jetty or Sang Yao Kyo. Unlike the Tans and the Lees, the Yos of Yo Jetty originated from Changzhou Prefecture in Fujian Province. Therefore, the Hokkien they speak more closely resemble the Hokkien spoken in Penang. This is the southernmost of the six existing jetties. There used to be more, the rest have gone into disrepair, abandonment and demolition. The last jetty to be demolished, not because it was in disrepair, but because it had to make way for urban development, was Kuei Jetty. The demolition of Kuei Jetty happened between 2005 and 2006 and I managed to take some photographs of it before it was demolished. The demolition of this jetty was met with much local protest and since then, the World Heritage Inscription has managed to save the six remaining jetties from demolition. Kuei Jetty was not one jetty but two parallel jetties of unequal lengths. It was the home of the Kueis which were Hui or Muslim Chinese. They came to Penang by way of Chuanzhou where they had lived for many centuries. Therefore, the original Kuei migrants spoke Hokkien with the Chuanzhou accent, but their descendants today have assimilated and speak Penang Hokkien. At last, we reach the pier of Yo Jetty. Every year, during the Nine Emperor Gods Festival, the boat sending off the Nine Emperor Gods leaves from this pier.
and on this side is the Hianbu Tian Temple. We will be going there next. Each of my videos will be carefully researched to provide you a virtual discovery tour of the places I explore. I have shot a lot of video footage but no time to publish them to YouTube yet. As you can possibly imagine, editing the videos and doing the narration is very time consuming. But I hope you have enjoyed what I have shown and I look forward to meeting you again in my next video. Thanks for watching.